Nabila, I mean, you know, there's a place in China that's just gone back into lockdown. Um, there's talks about goings on in places like Hong Kong, and there's still a desire um, in some places to get to zero COVID, to literally try and eliminate COVID from the menu, if you, if you, uh, you know, excuse my crassness. But it's just not possible in my mind anyway. Um, and we do just have to get on. What do you think about what Frank was just saying then, again, about the whole kind of cave syndrome and people that have been, um, they've adjusted now to this new normal Yes, absolutely. And that's why one of the government's announcements um, uh, towards the end of the year was to say that we have to learn to live with it. Um, Britain has been one of or the first country, I think, to uh, move from the status of pandemic to endemic, mm -hmm. meaning that you will the, the, the COVID-19 will be or the virus will be part and parcel of our lives uh, from now on. <clears throat> but, you know, with vaccination rollouts being <clears throat> showing that they were quite effective in containing or indeed making the um, the, the, the virus less uh, life-threatening, if I may say so. We see less cases of uh, people dying, for example. Um, so that should be welcome, uh, you know, welcome news. But I think, as you quite rightly said, one of the aspects of all this has been to learn uh, that we can lose our freedoms fairly quickly and we shouldn't take anything uh, for granted in that respect. And, and beyond the cost uh, of dealing with all this, I think the sheer amount of stress and hassle and indeed all the paperwork involved has been an absolute nightmare uh, for most of us. And the last couple of years have been particularly miserable for all travellers in, in particular, whether going on business trips or, or indeed on holidays. So I think this is fantastic news as far as I'm concerned, and especially as the Easter holidays are, are, are nearing. 